Hey everyone, I'm Lorenz and in this video I'm going to talk about the two Commandos games on the PS2. Commandos Man of Courage is the port of the game released in 2001. On PC it's regarded as a masterpiece. In spite of some flaws, once you get used to the gameplay it becomes addictive. On PS2 because you don't have a mouse, the game becomes a tiny bit clunkier, but it's still solid. In the game you're commanding a small group of elite allied operatives deep behind enemy lines during World War II. I love that on the PS2 version they added a tutorial. The PC version doesn't have one, which meant that on PC you had to go through a lot of trial and error until you learn how to get along with the game. But even if it has this, that the PC version doesn't, the PC version was sharper and crisper. And this is an advantage not just because it looks prettier. It's a functional advantage too. On PS2 the graphics look washed out and are low quality. Even if you have a zoom feature on PS2, it's still hard in some parts to spot enemies or sniper outposts, which makes it harder to distinguish stuff on the map. Also there are frame rate charts in the game which appear while you make a move. And it's not pleasant to have your game chug while you are playing it. On the good side, there are plenty of locations, but the gameplay does tend to get repetitive. You'll usually tackle a mission like this, roam the map to see where every enemy is, then strike by sending a spy to distract a guard, take down a guard and advance. The other operatives um, are the thief which can scale walls, the marine which can remain underwater indefinitely, the sniper that can take aim from telephone poles, and then the green barret, which can climb hand over hand across wires. If you go with the spy tactic and you will send spies 30 or 40 times in a level until you reach your goal, well then the game will get really repetitive. But still, goals include rescue allied soldiers, sabotage sea vessels, assassinate key enemy officials or getting your hands on important documents. So as goals you get different stuff, you get variety there. While the gameplay does tend a little bit towards repetitiveness, kind of. An annoying part is that operatives repeat the same lines every time you do an action. And this does get annoying. But considering that maps change, thus conditions change and considering how tense the gameplay is, you will overcome this when you play the game. The game contains 10 missions and each one is intense because of the action and suspense from both the gameplay and the music. The audio is great. So all in all, the game was regarded as a masterpiece then and it still remains strong. But in order to appreciate it, you need to judge it in context. This were the games then. It's a 90s style strategy game that if you give it a chance it will make you sweat as hard as it did in 2001 when the game came out. I mean it might not look like much from the gameplay footage you see but once you get into the game it's tense. You have to watch where enemies are and watch every command you give in order to reach your goal. Still if you were to choose I will recommend you playing the game on PC, it, it's much better. Commando Strike Force is a nice change, but hardcore fans of the series consider it disappointing because it strays away too much from what Commandos is all about, an intense strategy game. In the game you don't do the strategy part anymore, instead you get more personal. Instead of giving commands to a character, now the computer tells you where to go and you execute the commands, meaning you get in the shoes of the characters instead of telling them what to do. And I find this formula refreshing. Sure, more intense strategy games in the franchise will be welcome every day, but this type of gameplay isn't bad at all. You control three types of operatives. The spy, which can change costumes and can stealth kill enemies. You need to act fast as your disguise gets blown easily. Snipers are one-man armies. And finally, they are more useful than in the other games. As the sniper, you don't just snipe people down, but you also mow your way through enemy lines. And the Green Barrets do it even better. They ramble through enemy lines, killing every enemy. Their life points are plenty, which means that you just go on a slaughter fest with them. Overall, the game is really good. The graphics are nice for that time, controls are nice, and as I said, the game is a nice iteration in this series. I like it. 
in spite hardcore fans giving the game a hard time for not being like the rest. I still like it. And as a general conclusion to both games, just try them out. You'll, you're most probably going to like them both. As they are incredible games, they are original, tense and just great. Just try them out. You are missing out if you don't play them.